hello guys so my name is Amy and I am wife to bright and today I will be acting as a bit of a what's that word a host I'll be acting as a bit of a host um but bright's here with me obviously because this is his podcast show yes hello hi everyone how are you today I'm very well thank you how are you yeah, not bad, thank you. This is our downtime. Yeah. Um, so we thought we'll have um, this conversation now. Yeah, yeah, better now than uh, than later with, with the kid in bed. Definitely. I mean, I know a lot of people are waiting because you've definitely brewed some interest in this topic and I think it's quite relevant. So if you're here... You're here to hear about um, the Joseph anointing because Bright has been posting about this um, from crisis to crisis, from a food crisis to an energy crisis to just say one word and then there's a crisis, honestly. Um, what, mm -hmm. how do we understand what's going on and what is Joseph's role in all of this? I believe if you're here, that's what you want to find out. And for those of you who aren't from a Christian background, um, we're, we're both Christians. So when we speak of Joseph, it's not a random name that we've pulled out of a hat. Um, we're making reference to Joseph in the Bible. In the Bible, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I won't take much longer. Um, I'm sure people want to hear more mm -hmm. from you. So, right. I'd love to start by asking you what the Joseph anointing is, <laughs> but that would be heading too much into into the main stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> what is it that you have to share? Let's start from there. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you, Amy, for your help. Yeah, I think, I feel like I have quite a lot to share. Um, I God has been speaking to me about this since February, uh, specifically about two weeks before the war in Ukraine. So since February up until now, literally every day, just, you know, since God spoke to me and gave me, you know, two dreams about this tied in with another dream that I had um, last year in 2021, everything began to make sense and pretty much everything that God has shown me just began to happen and come to pass. So I figured it's important that I... I put this together and, and I record something just to really, to get the word out there and, um, yeah, and, and get a lot of people prepared. Yeah, yeah, that's, mm. that's very important. I mean, you said you had them back in February, so yeah. we are recording this in August. It's yeah. um, the last weekend of August, so how come it's taken you so long to get to this point of, yeah, sharing bright? To be honest, it's a, it's it's a, it's a lot of things. Obviously, a, f a fault of my own really for taking so long because God has been really pushing me to share this since you know February, and you have been pushing and begging and asking. I don't <laughs> know about begging, but <laughs> yeah, you've been yeah you've been encouraging me really to share it from day one. But I, I don't know, I. I've I've had a lot to learn and I've learned a lot, a lot of it to learn, and you know the boldness to share it and also when God first started talking to me about this, no one else was talking about it at the time and I wasn't sure how people would receive it and what I started to do instead of sharing the word publicly, I started to share with with all my friends and family, um, around me, pretty much everyone who's close to me, I've shared with them these visions and what I felt God has been speaking since then. But to share it publicly, yes, it's taken me a lot longer <clears throat> than I should have. But in the process, I, I have learned that, you know, um, God is, God is not, God is, is actually interested in, in how we obey him, in how we, we, we obey his word. He's not really interested in how long we've been working with him. He's not interested in, in how old we were when we got saved, uh, what's the last scene that we did. God is interested in people that will do what he says when he says. So that 
for me has been one of the biggest lessons. And also what's made me share this word now, I've realized that progressively God has begun to speak to other people about this word. And the more he's spoken to other men of God about this word, the more I've realized that, hang on, yeah, I'm meant to share this word publicly. So it's challenged me really just to put it up there and to also share with people the, the, a different perspective that God has given me on this. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So I guess mm. ringing the alarm as well, another person to ring that alarm. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ringing the alarm indeed. Perfect. So bright. I think everybody wants to know now, what did you see? What did you see me? Yeah, so I saw, um, so these were two different visions. And then I'll, I'll share the other one that I had in 2021, which there are three in total that, that come together. So, but two weeks before the war in Ukraine, I had the first dream. In this dream, I saw two gas tanks, kind of like two trucks, you know, a huge uh, HGV trucks. So, you know, trucks that transport gas, so big, massive, round trucks. And they were driving slowly, very slowly, um, and they were filled with gas, driving slowly towards Northern Ireland. And these trucks were being escorted by, you know, terrorists like, um, what's the other word I'm looking for? Kind of like outlaws. Yeah. Um, you know, the guys that look like um, pirates, kind of really heavy armed, machete carrying, you know, AK-47. Malicious. Yeah, the militias, they were just, you know, angry guys that were really dressed and ready for, for war kind of thing. And they were... Trans, they were escorting these trucks towards Northern Ireland. And they were protesting and they were saying that, okay, so we're going to get there and in exchange for this gas, we want settlement visas. So I saw that happening. I'm like, whoa, this looks scary. So I said to the Holy Spirit, I said, what is going on here? What's all of this? And the Holy Spirit said, watch the price of gas. Gas will become so expensive and so valuable that nations will begin to fight over it and gas will be in the wrong hands. And gas will be so so pricey, so expensive and so valuable. And that's the first dream that I had. And I woke up when I shared that with you, obviously. Well, that's, that's yeah. That's interesting. And when did you say you had this? Do you remember what month it was? So this was in February, two weeks before. Oh, in February. The war, the war in Ukraine, yes. Right, okay. And then a few days later, I had a second dream. So after I woke up, I wrote this dream down. I had a second dream. Okay. In this dream, I was in my living room. And I'm standing right in the middle of the living room. And to the corner of my left, I had exactly 40 kgs of rice. Uh, stacked up, like piled up, you know, 10 kg, of, you know, 10 kg, 10, what, 40 kg is basically piled up. And I remember just looking at the rice, <coughs> standing, excuse me, in the, in the room. And all of a sudden, there was a loud voice, a loud announcement, like a loud voice that announced that. And the voice said, drought. As soon as there was an announcement that, drought there was a drought there was absolute chaos everywhere it was pandemonium i could tell that even though i was in the room i could tell that outside there were people running everywhere there were people rushing to buy food and you know just chaos people running to buy food and and i thought okay so it's time for me to also run and buy food and i remember looking at the rice that i was in the corner that i had stacked up and the holy spirit said that's enough rice but you don't have anything else. And I looked in the cupboards and around me, I didn't have anything else. And this was, uh, I didn't have any tinned tomatoes, any, 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 any tinned beans, any, any other thing that I could have the rice with, I didn't have. So I knew it was time to run and get out the house and go buy some food. And what was interesting is, is as soon as I left the room and I was walking in the corridor on my way out running to buy food with everybody else that was running around I saw a man this man I had seen him 
once. Um, I, hadn't, I haven't met him personally, but I'd seen him once. I'd gone to an event in London, uh, a business um, sort of event, and he was one of the, of the key speakers there. And this man is well-spoken, very gentle man, a God-fearing man, but he's also a businessman. So he's a very well-to-do businessman who's very successful in his industry. So I saw him there, and he's really relaxed. He's not rushing like anybody else. He's not running around like everybody else. He's really, really calm. And I remember just being surprised. He just offers to buy me a gift um, in the dream. So he just says, hey, bro, by the way, if you want... Uh, this gift, I can buy it for you. So I was so surprised and so shocked. I thought, in the midst of all this chaos, why is this man offering to buy me a, a gift right now? And the Holy Spirit said, He is one of my Josephs. This is where we get the Joseph anointing. And that's when I woke up. As soon as I woke up, there was a download of who Joseph is and what is going on and what is happening. And that's where... We get the Joseph anointing. Wow. That's all I can say. <laughs> it sounds like a movie. It feels like a bit of a movie. Um, mm. But, wow, that, those are very vivid visions. Um, can you share with us the very last one? Yes, yeah, so the very last one is a, is a dream that I had uh, towards the end of last year. It's when about November 2021. And in this dream, I saw a graph. So this was a graph of a specific cryptocurrency called XRP. So I saw XRP, so I, I got a flash, a very clear flash of a graph of XRP. XRP went up from what it is now. I think right now XRP is currently at about, I don't know, uh, from this point of recording. Uh, last time I checked, it was about 34, 34 cents uh, a coin. So it went up from what it is now, and it went from 34 cents, it went to... 12 13 14 15 dollars a coin and it kind of just leveled up and i got a flash of how much my investment was worth at the time so the holy spirit just kind of showed me how much my investment was worth at the time and i remember seeing that in the dream seeing how much my investment was worth and i immediately regretted that i hadn't bought more the vision ended as soon as i woke up i remember sharing that with you <laughs> and we immediately invested a bit more on XRP. So these are the visions that collectively came together when I, I, I had these two this year. Okay, wow. It sounds like it's been a bit of a story going on, like a series, really, a series of dreams, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So they, 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 they came together and... Um, as, yeah, yeah, I can say that. Yeah, I mean, what I would love to know, <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of other people would like to know as well, okay, so what do they mean? Because I think with some of them, people can get the generic kind of understanding, okay, there's something coming. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there is that generic understanding, but how do you break it down? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because there's a lot of imagery and symbolism there. Like, I'm sure people mm -hmm. want to understand, like, Okay, so mm -hmm. now what? What what did these dreams mean for me now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great question. I think there is a lot, and hence why we we're going to do this in in different segments and in different episodes because there is a lot to unpack. There's a lot to unpack, and I think the best thing would be to go straight away to 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 Joseph because that's what I you know I want us to talk about today. Remember, we saw Joseph and the Holy Spirit says, he is one of my Josephs. So when I woke up that day, I began to ask God, okay, so what does this really mean? And the Holy Spirit said, okay, study the, the story of Joseph and you will realize what it is that I'm doing. And I heard God say, you know, this, the time has come for my Josephs to rise. The Joseph anointing has been released and if people want to know what to do right now in this season in these times the answer is with the Josephs because in this season the Josephs will begin to rise So 
So thanks for joining us after that short break. Now, if you have been listening, then you do know that we've been having a really interesting conversation yep. with Bright. Um, he's been telling us about some visions that the Lord has been showing him mm-hmm. regarding the times that we're in. So we've covered um, the vision. So like I said, if you haven't been following, then do make sure you scroll back so that you can catch up. Um, and yeah, what it means for us right now. So what I think is best to go into next would be what is the Joseph anointing? Cause that's how we rounded up the last segment. Um, mm. that was just telling us that the Lord is saying, I am raising up Joseph's in this season. Mm. So I guess the, the obvious question is, okay, who are these Joseph's? What do they look like? And what is this anointing all about? So over to you, Bright. Yeah, thank you. Thank you and welcome back, guys. So, the Joseph anointing, so this is so vast as you can imagine. It's uh, it's so huge and I'm trying my best to really break it down as best as I can. But we get a situation in Genesis chapter 41 where Pharaoh has these dreams. Um, and um, let me just go from, from verse 32, uh, Genesis 41 from verse 32. Joseph says, the reason the dream was given to Pharaoh in two forms is that the matter has been firmly decided by God and God will do it soon. Very interesting, right? And now let Pharaoh look for a discerning and wise man and put him in charge of the land of Egypt. Now that was Joseph's suggestion to Pharaoh after interpreting his dreams, which I think is also quite interesting and the reason why God says uh, I have released my Joseph anointing and if my people really want to know what to do in this season they should appoint Joseph and I think we are exactly in this time right now where if as a family you want to know what to do you should appoint a Joseph in this season to help you with your finances with your money with a strategy because if you look at um Genesis 41, verse 34, Joseph says, Let Pharaoh, he continues to speak, he says, Let Pharaoh appoint commissioners over the land and take a fifth of the harvest of Egypt during the seven years of abundance. Now, the Joseph anointing is an anointing that brings about a strategy in the form of what to do. The Joseph anointing is is an anointing of a dreamer one who can see the future, one who can interpret dreams, one who can who can strategize and bring about solution. The Joseph anointing is is a governmental anointing, one that that allows you to understand politics, one that understands and one that elevates you to positions of governments whereby your the gift that God has placed in you can function at such a high level that it can help others, it can help nations. And we are exactly at these times where those that have the Joseph anointing will begin to rise to positions of government. Whether if they're in business, their businesses will actually explode, expand to a point where they can help or they can influence many people. The Joseph anointing is that of, of an overcomer one that overcomes anything one that if they they throw you in a pit you get out if you're sold as a slave somehow you will work for the king if you're put in prison somehow you'll be in charge of the prisoners and if you're in prison somehow you will get out and if you're working you're working in a high level position where you can lead people this is a joseph anointing wow wow oh, that is spectacular really um mm. and thank you for bringing that home because you've really broken it down you've brought it from mm. genesis and explained who joseph was um mm. in that day and i guess what i'd encourage everyone to read is that full chapter and probably right, the yeah. chapters before isn't it for some context mm. um but 
I think that's amazing because you, you just read a, a bit of an excerpt from that. Yeah, I, f- I feel like just reading a bit more as well just to continue because the Joseph anointing is, a, is that of, of, of giving a strategy. And Joseph continues in chapter 35. Sorry, so yeah, um, yeah Genesis 35. Genesis 41 verse 35. 41. Yeah, 35. 41. So I'm just, I'm just continuing just for the need just to complete those few verses uh, because there is a strategy that Joseph is giving here to the king. Uh, he continues to say, they should collect all the food of these good years that are coming and store up the grain under the authority of Pharaoh to be kept in the cities for food. This food should be held in reserve for the country to be used during the seven years of famine that will come upon Egypt so that the country may not be ruined by the famine. Yeah, just that I'll finish that, by the way, yeah. Amazing, thank you. So that was his strategy, mm-hmm. um, and that's it. So what I've gotten from that is the Joseph anointing, or if I'm looking for, yeah, that Joseph anointing in today's world, in 2022, mm-hmm. these are people with practical strategies on how to navigate yeah, this, this crisis yeah. Na- navigate well not this but all crises yeah um, navigate the seasons that we're in mm-hmm. um but also not just with their own wisdom i love what you said you know mm-hmm. one who can see the future one who can interpret dreams so one who can understand the mm-hmm. mind of god download it and interpret it that's right to us that's right um but not just that not just mm-hmm. tell us what's coming but mm-hmm. say, hey, you guys don't have to go through this. Mm-hmm. If you do X, Y, Z, it's going to be all right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I love because this man that God showed me, the Joseph, that, that so far God has revealed to me, um, myself included, I've seen five Josephs. So, so far I have seen five Josephs in the eyes of the Spirit. But there are obviously more. But the ones that I've seen, there are five. These are people that God has raised up um, to, to disciple people. Um, in this season, as to what to do concerning the crisis, the crisis that we're going through, yeah. So, but I mean, not everyone is a Joseph. I mean, the Joseph anointing is quite unique in itself, and the Joseph is appointed by God, right? It's not every millionaire who's a Joseph, by the way, because there are many in this season um, that will rise as millionaires. There are many this season that will make money, but just because someone is a millionaire doesn't make them a Joseph. Just because someone has been, you know, buying and selling properties from the age of 19 doesn't make him a Joseph. Josephs are unique and Josephs are appointed by God. That, I thought, I thought that's important to say. Because yeah. I feel like, you know, what, what will happen this season is Christians especially, uh, well, everyone really, but just, you know, just speaking about Christians especially this season, they are discerning that this is a time to, to stand up or to excel. So just, just to put it in perspective, I felt God say, this is a season to invest, for example, right? This is a season to invest. So the year between 2010 and 2020, 2020 was a season to start businesses. So some of you listening may have that may have had that feeling to start a business between 2010 and 2020. That's because the grace of entrepreneurship was poured out. And many people started businesses and many people, you know, started this and that and they felt they need to start a business. Some obeyed what God was saying then in that time, in that season. Some didn't. But we saw a shift in 2020 when COVID happened and a lot of people started shifting from starting businesses to investing. Starting a business and investing, they're two different things. So this season between 2020 and 2030 is a season to invest. So a lot of Christians have received that word from God, okay, I need to be investing. But sadly, a lot of them have already started losing their money, right? Because of people that come out and pretend they're Joseph. And they, you know, scam you somehow. They say, pay this money and whatever. And you end up losing your money because someone has pretended to be a Joseph, but they're not, so you have lost your money. So... I'm guessing, not I'm guessing, but from what you are saying, it takes mm-hmm. revelation to identify That's a right. Joseph. That's right. And revelation comes from? From God. Perfect. Yeah. So yeah. from reading the word, from spending time yeah. in his presence, yeah. from being attentive to the Holy Spirit. Because I guess I'm trying to make it as practical as possible to people who are listening. Because mm-hmm. they're, they're thinking, oh, would 
would God speak to me through a loud voice and right. say, this is your Joseph? Maybe. But he could also speak in different ways is what Absolutely. I was trying to get across. Absolutely. I mean, one of the easiest ways that I can help someone listening to say, okay, how can you tell that this is a Joseph? I mean, one of the, the easiest ways uh, to identify a Joseph, one, not, not the, one is they would have had similar visions and encounters regarding this drought. This, this this crisis that we're in, you know, what's happening. So they have some sort of revelation from God regarding what's going on right now. That, to me, is an identifier of one of the Josephs that God has told, mm-hmm. you know, or revealed what's going on right now. That is a Joseph, for example, you know, what we have in the Word. But yeah, so that is one way that you could use. So if you see or hear anyone that says, I've seen something similar from God, chances are that person has a strategy that God has also given them to navigate this season, and that could be a Joseph closest to you. Amazing. Yeah. So I hope that makes um, things clear for you. I, I, I just wanted to touch another point that you mentioned, right? You were saying mm. a Joseph is someone with a governmental anointing yeah. that allows, you know, well, allows them to understand the mm-hmm. policy mm-hmm. or the policies and influence government. But it's just understanding policies, isn't it? Especially mm-hmm. in today's, um, I don't know, in, in this age that we live in, right? Mm-hmm. Because there's so much good and God and all of this, but good is mm-hmm. not always God. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it takes God to reveal which policies are actually his yeah, yeah. <laughs> and which aren't, you know, yeah. in in... I'm trying not to go too much into it, um, but I think that's important, isn't it? Again, it takes revelation. Yeah, yeah, it it takes revelation. I don't, I don't think it's something that a lot of people should necessarily scratch their heads about because I mean, there's this whole thing amongst Christians. Or should Christians be involved in politics? I mean, you know, whenever I hear that the whole Bible is littered with Christian politicians. You know, I mean, we look at Joseph himself working in, 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 in the government. We look at Daniel, <coughs> excuse me, he's working in the government. Uh, Mordecai was working in the government. Nehemiah. Nehemiah in the government. So we, I mean, David was a, was, a, was a president, if we're to use today's terminology. So there are politicians everywhere can go in the on Bible. And on. Yeah. So the Joseph anointing, works very closely. So what you will see, for example, in this day and age will be a lot of presidents, a lot of leaders, a lot of rulers will be reaching out to Josephs to seek help, to seek understanding, to, to, to ask for advice as to what to do. So policies, you know, and a lot of people think, you know, just because you know, they have this thing that, okay, governments are evil, so we should stay away from them and shut ourselves in, in a corner and in a room and just pray. And our answer is what God is saying. I'm raising up my Josephs to go help those in government and leadership. Definitely. And I think there's no better context to what mm-hmm. you've just read. Um, Genesis 41, right? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. people or the Israelites could mm-hmm. have said the Egyptians are evil because we all understand that the Israelites had a very strict mm-hmm. law of, you know, don't mingle. Um, the laws of Moses, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, that were given to them. Yeah. But... Yeah. Joseph mm-hmm. <laughs> realized, well, didn't realize, but just understood his call and didn't say, no, no, they are an unclean people. Exactly, exactly. And that's, that's the thing about the Joseph anointing is it's a very unique anointing in that people can and will often misunderstand you. If you look at Joseph as a young man, he began to have these dreams, right? You know, these, these leadership dreams and God saying, I will do this, you know, with you and I will do this and that. But he was hated by his family. He, they didn't see and they couldn't see that the anointing that was upon Joseph's li- life was to save them in the future. You see, that's, that's, that's the interesting part about the Joseph anointing. They couldn't see. So you often find a, a Joseph talking about business, talking about investments, talking about, okay, um, we need to strategize and do this differently, do that. But in often times, a Joseph will be told, shut up, well, you know, why are you always talking about money? Why are you always talking about business? But that anointing that Joseph has is to save you in the future. Is for a specific season that is coming. And that season is here. The Joseph anointing is the anointing for prosperity. 
and prosperity is not money. The scripture says Joseph prospered because the Lord was with him. Prosperity is not money. Money is one of the forms of money is a manifestation of one of the forms of prosperity right prosperity is is a state it's a way of life mm, i like that prosperity is health you know prosperity is when you're put in charge of a king's palace and everything thrives you know prosperity is when your father-in-law puts you in charge of his of of his sheep and goats and they multiply you know prosperity is mm. when you can rebuild the walls of Jerusalem in 52 days when people have tried before you and they've failed. Mm. Prosperity is is when you're thrown in the lion's den and you come out alive. That's that's prosperity in my eyes. Is prosperity is the anointing to overcome. It's a state, it's a way of life. Mm. You know? Yeah. So this is the Joseph anointing. That's amazing. Thank you so mm. much. Thank you so much. I think this has mm. been really insightful. You did mention that you'll be doing a few more um, episodes yeah. and just going into this a bit more. So, yeah, um, yeah we look forward to hearing that. What What's the next one about? <laughs> There's a lot. Yeah, I think we've gone probably, it's going to be half an hour now. So I think, yeah, we do need to stop and go. So probably um, the next episode we can look at mentorship in this season, like I, like I said before, uh, a lot of Christians, a lot of people, not just Christians, are beginning to see that, okay, I need to change something in my life right now. I need to, to look for a mentor. But unfortunately, this will be very interesting. The next one will be very interesting as well. So we'll look at mentorship and how to go about to get the right mentorship to look for the right Joseph okay. in this season to come. Okay? So... Yeah, so we'll look at mentorship, and I think after that we can look at um, Goshen mm -hmm. and what role the, the prophetic city of Goshen plays in these days. So we can look at Goshen city after that, and perhaps after that we can look at um, the Great Reset and what that means and what that role that will play. So, yeah, it, it's a lot. It's a lot, but Lovely. yeah. So the next, the yeah, the immediate one we're looking forward to is mentorship. Yeah, mentorship and how to go about getting the right mentorship and i'll share two visions that i've had regarding mentorship okay. on the next one amazing yeah. so we've got more visions to come yeah every every episode <laughs> will be filled with that nice nice and you know i'm itching to ask this question because i think it's a nice way to end and i think it's an evident or an obvious question that we can't leave without asking would you say you are a joseph yes i would say so yeah for this season Absolutely, yeah. Especially with, with God having revealed uh, these visions. I mean, what what I've just shared is just nothing but a snippet. So, yeah, as, as time goes on, I would state why I feel I'm called to be a Joseph in this season as well. Amazing. So, yeah. guys, you heard it here first. Um, yeah, God is on the move, mm -hmm. but we, his people, are are protected yeah. if we listen to his <laughs> to the instructions that he's given us and right. um yeah it's an exciting time really to be honest because mm. um we're we're about to see God show up and show off in a in a new way um so yeah, yeah I'm looking forward to it I'm looking forward to yeah hearing more about uh what we've just what we've just uh discussed yeah yeah looking forward to that wonderful all right lovely guys so enjoy you. your week and mm -hmm. thank you so much for tuning in hopefully we'll catch you on the next one stay tuned god bless you